So now, looking at this next one, again, ladies and gentlemen, if we're going to do a problem like this, again, we automatically want to look into factoring. You set your equation equal to 0. x squared plus 2x minus 5. We try to factor it. What two numbers multiply to give you negative 5, add to give you 2? And we think about it. What two numbers multiply to give you negative 5, add to positive 2? Uh, nothing. It's not factorable, right? So you have two options. You can do this formula that we did in Asia. You can do all of this. You can complete the square. Or we can use our quadratic formula. Now, the quadratic formula is not just helpful for solving it like we did for completing the square. It's also helpful for being able to describe the types of solutions of the formula, uh, or of your quadratic. And to do that, we have to make sure, again, our quadratic is in standard form. Then, to identify what type of solutions we have, we determine the discriminant. If you guys remember, discriminant was b squared minus 4 times a times c. So we make sure all the variables and everything's on the same side. We set it equal to 0. Then we identify what a, b, and c are. a, in this case, is equal to, what is a? 1. b is equal to 2. And c is equal to negative 5. So the first thing we do, ladies and gentlemen, is that identify what the discriminant is. So I'm just take 2 squared. So I take 2 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 5. 2 squared is? Four. Negative 4 times 1 times negative 5? Positive 20. So therefore, my number is 24. Now, in our notes, what we discussed is what, what this number is tells us what type of solutions we're going to have. If you guys remember from your homework, when that number was negative, there was no real roots, right? And there was what we call no real roots, or we'd say two complex roots. No real roots or two complex roots if this number is negative. The next one, if the number is um, a square number, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 100, all the numbers you can take a square root of. If that number is a square number, then we said the answer had two rational roots. Is 24 a square number? No, you can't take the square root of it, right? So what this does is produce two irrational roots. And then the last one, ladies and gentlemen, was if your discriminant was 0, then your answer had only one rational root. Now, let's again go back to understanding what is the difference between rational and irrational. So if I had the square root of 9, Molly, do you know what the square root of 9 is? Three, very good. Now, Molly, do you know what the square root of 24 is? Well, there is one, but it's an irrational number. It's, an e it's a decimal that goes on and on forever. So rather than trying to write down that irrational number, what we do is we simplify them. And the way that we simplify the square root of 24 is we say, is there any square numbers that evenly divide into 24? Again, square numbers are 1, 4, 9, um, 16, 25. Any of the numbers that I just said? D evenly divide? No. Guys, does 25 divide into 24? No. Does 16 divide into 24? Yeah. Does 9 divide into 24? Four. Does 4 divide into 24? Six. Yeah, how many times? I thought most of the numbers four. had to be squared. Just one. Six. Four times six. Now, what is the square root of four? Two. Two. No, do you understand that? Yes. What's the, do we know the square root of six? Is 6 a square number? No. Can we divide another square number into 6? No. So we leave it as the square root of 6. I thought you said 2 is a square number. No. 2, if it's a square number, you can say the square root of 2 would be two numbers that multiply to give you 2 that are exactly the same. 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4, right? So you can't take the square root of 2. So we take the square root of 4, so you have 2 square root of 6. Do you guys see square root of 6, again, is not a rational number. That's irrational. Rational, irrational. So now, that's just how we classify them, which is going to be important for your test. But we're not done, though. It's asking us to find the values for x, just like we found the values of x over here. So what we do is we take the this rest of the problem, which is opposite of b. So my b in this case is 2. So I have negative 2 plus or minus. If you guys look at this, it's the square root of the discriminant. Well, I already know my discriminant is 24. 
oh, I say, I already know my discriminant is 24, and I reduce my discriminant to 2 square root of 6. No, do you need to move, or are you OK there? No, I'm OK. OK. Divided by 2 times a. Well, a is 1, so it's just going to be 2. OK? Now, that is fine. That is the answer, but it's not. a is 1. Now, this is correct, but it's not simplified. So to simplify this, we need to divide the 2 into both of these terms. And once we divide the 2 into both of these terms, we need to simplify it again. That divides to negative 1. That divides to positive 1. So it's negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 6. That would be your final simplified answer.